On the 11th of March, 2011, Japan was struck with the largest earthquake ever recorded on the island nation. It measured an historic 9.0 on the Richter scale. The resulting tsunami caused untold damage to coastal infrastructure, and an estimated 25,000 people lost their lives. The massive tsunami struck the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, destroying its main and backup electrical power sources. Despite untiring efforts by the nuclear plant workers, the lack of electricity to cooling systems led to core damage on three of the reactors. One aspect of this tragedy that people found most fascinating was explosions in the buildings that housed the damaged reactors. While the explosions were visually spectacular and offered great footage for television news, the explosions were of buildings housing the reactors and containment structures, not of the reactors themselves. Fukushima Daiichi captured the attention of the world for weeks as the events unfolded and inspired a new round of conversation about the safety of atomic energy. The news media, eager to capitalize on the crisis, frequently turned to opponents of nuclear energy who skillfully exploited the public sphere. Uh, all of the reports are saying, well, this, that's all happening in Japan, here in the United States. Uh, we're in a, in a much better situation with our plants. But one of the things that you uncovered was an assessment that the, that the, uh, the government did back in the 1980s of the potential, uh, uh, the potential deaths and injuries that might occur from a reactor uh, accident and a, and a breach of containment uh, in the United States. Could you talk about that, yeah, Ben? They've known the consequences all along. This is a report, it's called Calculation Reactor Accident Consequences 2, done by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, not Greenpeace. And it Can you explain the significance of this, the exposure of the fuel rods? <clears throat> Well, it's, it's uh, hugely significant. It's a very, very dangerous situation. I should note that the first reactor at Fukushima is identical to the Vermont Yankee plant, and which is now uh, up for relicensing, and which the people of Vermont are trying to shut. And we should also note that th this kind of accident, this kind of disaster, could have occurred in, at four reactors in California had the uh, uh, 9.0 Richter scale earthquake hit close to Diablo Canyon at San Luis Obispo or San Onofre uh, between L.A. and San Diego. We could very well now be watching Los Angeles or San Diego being evacuated had this kind of thing happened uh, in California. And of course, the issue is the same in Vermont. There are 23 reactors in the United States that are identical or close to identical to the first uh, Fukushima reactor. In the midst of public outcry, the government of Germany, a place where tsunamis can't occur, reacted by ordering the shutdown and rapid phase out of all nuclear plants. Meanwhile, the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation, or UNSEER, a committee composed of scientists from 27 member states of the United Nations, evaluated the health impacts of the Fukushima accident. UNSEER is responsible for a well-known analysis of the Chernobyl accident and is widely regarded as the most unbiased and reliable source on accidents concerning atomic radiation. They concluded that there are, quote, no acute immediate effects observed at Fukushima. Wolfgang Weiss, a member of the committee, optimistically predicted that health impacts would be low. Other scientific organizations, including the American Nuclear Society and the Health Physics Society, released similar statements confirming the impact on the general population would be negligible. Even the few plant workers who receive the highest radiation exposures have very low risk of future health effects. The lack of human health impacts from radiation released during the Fukushima event has not prevented self-appointed radiation experts from making outrageous claims of death tolls in the thousands. One of these activists was Helen Caltecott, an anti-nuclear protester whose 1982 film was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Documentary. We're about to destroy the most beautiful people in the world, the Indians and the Aborigines. And they know what the world's about because they worship the earth. Well, that's an effective scene, but it appears like an oasis in the middle of a flat, repetitive, boring film that seems endless, even though it lasts only about 60 minutes. I agree with you. I was very disappointed in the film. You know, a common criticism of film critics is that they will like a film if it's on the right side of a public issue. Uh -huh. In other words, a lot of people might say, well, you like the China Room because it's anti-nuclear uh, mm -hmm. destruction. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that criticism is true, 
So I expected in this film to like it because uh -huh. nobody wants to see the world blow up. The woman's doing, trying to do a good job for humanity, but it's a boring movie, and it just hits you with it. it. Is. She doesn't say anything interesting. I clocked it until about minute number 27. When it comes to radiation, I, I think I we're in danger, possibly, of falling into a similar trap to the um, trap that climate change deniers have fallen into with their cherry-picking of the science there. Uh, for instance, I don't think you could dismiss the UN Scientific Committee as being part of the nuclear industry. I don't think you can dismiss the very yes, large I amount could. of data yes, on the... You, sorry, you're saying you would dismiss the UN Scientific Committee as being part of the nuclear industry? Yes, let me tell you, George, wow. that okay, the well, International I, I, I Atomic it, it Energy to me Agency... That, I well, no, the I, UN well, Scientific Committee is what I'm talking about. But, I mean, if that is the case, then it, it worries me. After a televised debate, writer for The Guardian UK, George Monbo, pressed Caltecott for her evidence. After an off-camera exchange, he later commented on his blog, quote, The anti-nuclear movement to which I once belonged has misled the world about the impacts of radiation on human health. The claims we have made are ungrounded in science unsupportable when challenged, and wildly wrong. We have done other people and ourselves a terrible disservice. Mambo went on to add, failing to provide sources, refuting data with anecdote, cherry-picking studies, scorning the scientific consensus, invoking a cover-up to explain it, all of this is horribly familiar. These are the habits of the climate change deniers against which the green movement has struggled valiantly calling science to its aid. It is distressing to discover that when the facts don't suit them, members of this movement resort to the follies they have denounced. We have a duty to base our judgments on the best available information. This is not just because we owe it to other people to represent the issues fairly, but also because we owe it to ourselves not to squander our lives on fairy tales. A great wrong has been done by this movement, and we must put it right.